Hi, it's Craig on my R2 channel. Uh, this is a video that I told you I was going to do a long time ago on a previous video where I would go into the guts of my R2D2 slash R5D4 to show the electronics in it. Um, I never got around to it, so here it is. I'm going to show you how simple this is. It's not complicated. It's not a ton of circuit boards. It is just real simple stuff, and I'm going to flip this around and go over that. So, first thing I would like to cover is, back in the day, I did this a long time ago and I'm still doing it, my batteries are actually in the battery boxes. So, there they are, I've got one battery in each box, so my battery boxes are actually boxes for the batteries. Uh, I've got an inline fuse right down there at the battery, the wires do go through these power cables. So, we have that. Both batteries, power going up through the legs and entering the body. You can see where my power comes up through here. That's where the power goes back down through the leg to the motor drive in that foot. This power cable comes around. It meets up with that one, and there's the wire putting power back down into the leg for that foot. We go to this terminal block here. This terminal block has... Positive on the top three, negative on the bottom three. Uh, from there, I've got a fuse block. Then from there, we go to that switching array in the back. Let's go around. So this switching array, we have dome lights. So that way, if he's not powered up for remote control, I can just sip, simply flip on the dome lights the droid can be sitting there with the dome lights blinking. Sabertooth. This powers up the RC system. So we can do RC. These switches turn on or shut off the power from the Sabertooth speed controller down to the feet. I did that for two reasons. One, if R2 is at an event where he's just up on a stage but i still want the rc powered up so he can be sitting there head rotating looking around i can do that safely by shutting off the power to the feet that way he's in no danger of catching a stray signal and go zipping right off the stage you want him rc'd but you don't want him to go anywhere you shut that off the other reason you would do that is if you are transporting R2 around, pushing them, a DC motor is just that, a DC motor. Electricity, you know, power goes through the wires, turns the motor. But if the droid's powered off and I'm pushing them, that DC motor can also become a generator. So if I'm pushing them, I don't want that motor turning into a generator, generating power and putting it into that speed controller. So when I shut them down, I shut them down so the feet are disconnected from that saber tooth. So that's two reasons why I did that. I'm going to come back around and show you basically all of the RC system. All right. So that is it. That is... If I can move this, that's my RC receiver right in the middle there. That receiver has some signal wires that go down to these two speed controllers. That's my saber tooth speed controller there. The two center terminal screws is black and red for power in, and then the two screws on the left and the two screws on the right are for the power output going out to the feet. This speed controller up here with that red heat sink, uh, that's the speed controller for the dome rotation. That speed controller was a mistake. I bought it because the description on it was rather cryptic. It said a dual motor speed controller. Well, it was a dual motor speed controller. You can see I've used a yellow and a blue going to the dome rotation motor. But the other yellow and blue I haven't utilized because it's a single channel speed controller single channel forward reverse when you go forward 
it outputs power on both of those wires for forward and it outputs power on both of those wires for reverse. I think what it was for is it was for a radio controlled boat where you have two motors, but you steer by a rudder. So it's not something where you can independently make one motor go forward and the other motor go backwards. It's just a, a one channel. So I utilized that for the dome rotation. Um, this dome rotation motor right there is on a hinge and it's spring loaded. So when the dome goes on, boom, that rubber drive wheel is rotating the dome. That's a power seat motor. Um, but getting back to how simple this RC is, that is pretty much it. Here's a servo on that receiver for my forward reverse on the 232. And if I can get in here again, it's a tight squeeze. <laughs> receiver, speed controller for the foot drive, speed controller for the dome rotation. That is it. That's the extent of my electronics in here. The exception to that rule is I do have a circuit board ah, way up there in the front. That is just simply an amplifier for the sound system. Um, it's one of those little electronic uh, soldering kits, this little one watt amplifier. It's actually a pretty impressive amplifier. So that goes to this, uh, this uh, speaker in, in uh, this vent right here. But what I've done, and this is just, uh, this was just, this was very last minute. This was uh, crunch time for celebration in Chicago in 2019. For the sound system, I just got an MP3 player, put it in there. It's connected to that amplifier and that speaker. And um, I just went on the computer and I put some sound files on a computer. Um, I had three different sound files. I had R2-D2 sounds, which was about a dozen to two dozen R2 sounds with about an eight second silent gap in between each sound. So then what I'd do is I'd go into R2, play those files on repeat, and driving him around, he'd just be randomly chattering. In R5-D4, I had a second uh, file called R5. Same thing, about a dozen R5 sounds with a five to eight second uh, silent gap in between on a loop. The third sound, fi sound file was uh, music. I had three songs lined up. I had uh, uh, the Bee Gees staying alive. Don't ask me why. I just think that song is... <laughs> ridiculous and funny for, you know, strutting around. Uh, the other strutting song that I thought was awesome was I'm Too Sexy for My Shirt by Right Said Fred. For some reason, that didn't upload on there. Uh, but the, the third song was um, uh, the song by Yellow, the one that goes, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that one's in there. So when he's driving around, that's kind of ridiculous. But um, this is all upgradable. Uh, the whole reason for me building these, uh, what these are called under the shoulder vents. They are actually vents that go to the inside. I did not paint them. Uh, it's just blue felt um, on the inside. So I could put a huge speaker on this under the shoulder vent and under uh, behind that under the shoulder vent down there for a huge sound system. And maybe someday I will go with some sort of different soundboard where I can actually individually control sounds from the remote. But that would be difficult because it's uh, it's two different droids. I would have to isolate R2 sounds and R5 sounds. Plus, I got my ridiculous music files. So that is it. Oh, hey, check this out. So <laughs> I... Um, Here's my recharge port. Uh, for some reason, on my droids over the years, I went with a RCA, like a phono jack for recharging. So like my my, my um, chargers all have this on there, and I'd plug them in. So this is my recharge port here. And because of this temporary um, amplifier and MP3 here, uh, instead of hardwiring it in and putting in a switch, I just plug that into the recharge port, and now my amplifier is powered up. But uh, check this out. Back when I milled this uh, this robot back in 1999 to 2001, this was my recharge port. 
check this out. That's a cigarette lighter plug right there. So I would, this is called a power coupling in the Astromech world. I had a charger that I would plug in here and that's how I would charge R2. I could also plug cigarette lighter plug accessories in here if I wanted to run something else. So I decided to keep that in there just for posterity's sake. Um, I don't know if we can see it, but there it is. That is the back side of the cigarette lighter plug. The wires are not connected, but uh, that was another one of those things that I did back in the early days of the droid. And I just decided to keep it just because a lot of the R2 builders were very mad when I was taking this original first generation R2 Builders Club droid and redoing it. They were saying, no, that droid belongs in a museum. It's so, even though it is so wrong and inaccurate, you got to keep it that way. So I had to keep as much as I could preserved on this droid, as I said in another video, as a tribute to the early days of the R2 Builders Club. So I just wanted to show you the electronics of this droid and how simple it can be. It doesn't have to be this complicated thing. There's no Arduino, there's no programming, there's none of that. It's just simple motors and switches. This is Craig on my R2 Builders channel and I hope you enjoyed this. Give me a like. Catch you later.